We good. We in there. We in there like swimwear. Yes, we are. What's popping, everybody? This is your girl, Miss P. Let me not be broke. Take my gum out. I don't want to be like blowing bubbles and shit. So we just gonna put this over there. Yes, for safekeeping. Yes, don't judge me. Make sure to go ahead and thumbs up in this video. I'd really appreciate it. And subscribe if you haven't already. That lets me know that you enjoy this content and you want to keep it going. You know what I'm saying? It is time for another love and hip hop review. Also, follow me on my social media on Instagram as well as Twitter. And I'm also on Snapchat. Make sure to follow me. You never know. I just might follow you back. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get it popping. We end off last time. Y'all remember uh, Mimi bought a riblet to the party. And Jocelyn was asking her, okay, so is your riblet's tongue better than mine? Uh, is her cootie cat better than mine? Oh, she don't let you be in her cootie cat? Uh, okay. Uh. I'm still trying to find Mimi's bottom lip because it was just a drag in the floor. I think her and Riblet's bottom lip. No, mm -mm. no, it's probably over there in Scraps' hair. Mimi was like, Jocelyn, she's up to her old tricks. It's not cool to do to my Riblet. You don't talk to my Riblet. <laughs> and Chris was tight. Oh, she was tight. Jocelyn was like, success is the best rubbish. I was like, hold up. I had to rewind because I couldn't really follow. Jocelyn talking about she got a special guest of honor and where the rest of the girls. And Mimi was like, well, they all declined on your ass. <laughs> The way I cackled, like the cackle came from the depths of my soul. Sidebar, when Stevie was coming in, why did Jock look like the Tin Man from the Wiz? Like, he just said, did it, did it, did it, did it. Y'all know Jock ain't got shit to do. Here comes Steve Lynn on cue in the sweater. Um, he was making me very hot because it's almost summertime and oh, uh, it's just hot. Stevie meets Chris and calls her beautiful. And all at once, Mimi was like, I told you not to call my ribbit beautiful. Chris was like, I'd rather be called handsome. Stevie and Jocelyn are mad disrespectful anyway. Here goes Stevie making kissy faces and shit. I'm about like Chris. Nigga, ew! No, I don't want you. I don't. Steve Lynn, you know Chris don't want that sausage biscuit. She don't want that. She don't. I'm sorry. Mimi might want it again. I don't know. I don't know what y'all gonna do. But Chris, I don't, I don't think she want it. Scrap pops up with his messy wash and go. How did, okay, we're just gonna talk about this. At first, Scrap's messy bun was messy. Then later on when they go to the bar, I don't know if anyone peeped this, it was silky straight, like just for me. Out of nowhere, like clockwork, here come Tommy. Something really wrong. I like Tommy, I do. I'm trying to give her the benefit of the doubt, being that we don't know her that well, but child, something. Okay, you know when you put a light bulb in there and you got to change the light bulb and you don't put it in all the way and then when you try to turn it on, it just flickers. That's what happens. Sometimes she's on, sometimes she's off. She wants to talk to Jocelyn because Jocelyn put the little bug in her head about something that she heard about a dirty bitch being with Scrap. Tommy will go to China to find this F. Told me about a dirty, ugly ass bitch. I didn't see her, so I'm talking to you. I was like, oh, Tom Tommy really doesn't care. She really, she don't care. Scrap comes over because he talking about he want to be a man and talk to Tommy, okay? So he comes over where Jocelyn and Tommy are and he wants to talk to her and basically she drops a nice little bomb gap band about KK and Stevie steady rocking knocking others back in the day. Well, no, it really wasn't back in the day. She said it was about 15 years ago. So I said, oh, what? He was like, nah, that's my mama and my uncle. She was like, and that might be your daddy. <laughs> it, okay, that cackle that I had last night when I watched this, it almost woke up the ancestors on my daddy's side of the family. Like, that's how... <laughs> it's just the way she said it. Maybe your dad. Like, I mean, it was like, oh my God. Did y'all notice what nobody at the party? Like, she ain't like the party. Wasn't nobody at the video damn release party, girl. You were better off having it at the Jordan Mansion, okay? Getting you some pretzels and some uh, lima Ritos, honey. It's time for, to see the video, finally. I mean, they be talking about all this shit they doing, having parties and stuff, but you never see the final result. So, the video was for everybody go to church. Now it's time to go to work. Whatever the hell the song, however it goes. Our, um, the scenery was nice. <sighs> Jocelyn made a speech. Um, she was saying how I think we all need to just get along. We need to eat Hot Pockets, the new ones that are like croissants. I uh, love the Lord. Yep. Hennessy for everybody. Enjoy. Thank you for coming. <laughs> then here come Dawn ass. Why in the hell did Dawn look like she stepped out of 2000 music video, had the see-through shades? I was just like, Dawn, 
what the hell? I think we were all looking at Don like, why are you here with all the havoc that you cost last year? Tommy doesn't like Don. Tommy don't like a lot of people. Tommy doesn't like Don because Don, in her true fashion, was spreading rumors. I was like, no, Don. Yeah, that's what Don is known for: spreading rumors, spreading lies, talking about people. Just that. That's what Don does. Tommy. She don't give a shit. She just rolled up on Don. You know me? You know me? Don was like, you better get your motherfucking finger out of my motherfucking face. You better say, I, I, I was like, ooh, ooh. The finger pointing. Then security already knows about Tommy. They were already on it before it escalated. Oh, while they were really taking her out, here comes Spit. Spittle. She spittle. She spit on me. She spat on me. Tommy, what the hell were you eating for that spit to be so collective? Like it was like a, a snowball. <laughs> oh my God. Everybody was like, get, get out of here. I was even like, Tommy, go home. Roger, go home. Tammy and the Bamba, they're going on a see-through blind date. Um, Tammy know who the hell the dude is. Bambi didn't know. Maybe she did. She I don't know. Of course, Bambi is doing me because Scrappy and me, we not together. But I'm just going to do me. I love Scrappy, but not today. So today I'm going to go on a date. But tomorrow, I might be back with him. Ugh. Waka and his best friend come through. You know what? Waka is so spaced out and high as a kite. But I enjoy Waka's antics. I do. I can like, I know that uh, Bambi gonna like him because, I mean, we real niggas. And, like, real niggas got superpowers. And we like um, Lunchables and shit. So, I mean, that's it. You dig? Like, yep. <sighs> you know what, Bambi? You do what you want to do, okay? Scrap, sass, and Stevie. They meet up post-video party. Like, it's that night. Like I told y'all earlier with his hair super slick. I'm like, how the hell? So they meet to talk about what had happened was, and I'm like, everybody, what kind of setup is this? The whole setup made me holler because they were trying to act like they were on some mafia shit. Like, yo, she had a line. She disrespecting the family. Yeah, she can't disrespect our family. Well, that's your lady, so you need to check that girl. I'm like, what? I, I wasn't even listening, child. I really wasn't because I was too busy staring at Sass's mouth and how he, because she did, <laughs> I can't. Okay, so we stay pressed at pressed. I mean, do they even sell clothes and stuff in there? I mean, it's always something going on. Kelsey got ejected, a.k.a. she got sent home. Now, you know good and damn well if that wasn't her stepdaughter, Kelsey's ass would be fired. You know what? Kelsey ass, which is Rashida and Adam's apple's daughter, stepdaughter, her ass would be working at Subway through the week and 7-Eleven on the weekends to make ends meet until she figured out what the hell she wanted to do. Because I bet you not you wouldn't be coming up in my establishment late with a little attitude and I got to pay your ass. No, mm -mm, no, thank you. I'm sorry. Anybody, does anybody else work a job? I do. Um, Does your ass get there on time? I do. Rashida, girl, you better than me. And I think this is for TV, but you better than me. Mama Charlene makes me holler. She just makes me laugh. I enjoy Rashida's mama this season. I'm sorry. I've just been looking at a lot of sidebar stuff. Is Kirk on Rashida's arm and like a blowfish type of thing? I'm sorry. I, I don't. Kirk is on your arm? It looked like slurp, but whatever. Oh my god. This was the part of the episode where I had to pause like 20 times because each frame was making me want to throw up and gag. Um, throw up, gag, interchangeable, whatever. We're at Mama D's home with Ernest. <laughs> I bet it smells like baby oil, fish sticks, and light, like very, very, a hint, well, cigarettes, and a hint of love spell for Victoria's Secret. Because y'all know everybody used to wear that. That's what I think that home smells like. And carpet. What y'all think Baba D Nib House smell like? Put that down below. I would love to know what you guys come up with. <laughs> Oh, uh, Mama D and Ernest in the bed. I'm thinking they're just going to be having some random pillow talk like we see on Love and Hip Hop. No, this is full on granny and pop pop porn. Like I was just, I could not. And then when she, I can't when she was licking his nipples and stuff. Now I will say for Ernest to be an older gentleman, he don't look happy. He got that prison body, like the overly toed upper. <laughs> I can't. But Mama D, I, I can't. I can't. I don't want to. I, I felt like I was intruding. Like the way the camera was set up, I felt like we were intruding. I, 
I couldn't have been on the production team that day if I was helping shoot. I would say, you know what, we're just going to get a GoPro and put that shit in there and whatever y'all edit in, I don't care. I just did. She told him, go get the lube, Ernest. Ernest was out of lube. He said, now you know I, I can't afford to get the lube. I rolled. <laughs> You know I ain't had no money to get no loot. I was <laughs> Now I'm about like Ernest. Now Mama D, if you don't good well I need some lube for my Mr. Sausage to get in the biscuit. You don't good well you need to keep me stocked with some lube. You need to help little Ernest. You do good well what you getting yourself into. If you don't good and well his ass will steal hot dogs and the buns. How the hell are you gonna get lube? Now, Ma'am, like, you know my situation, D. You know my situation. You know I'm working two jobs. I'm like, damn, you working two jobs? Why the hell you, you can't get no loot? What the hell you paying for? Ernest, where the hell you working at? I'm about to put you with Kelsey. I can't. I can't. And then he walks out on the eye about hollering. I died laughing. I couldn't. I couldn't take them serious. Get ready to go to my aunt Deb's house. Like, I honest to God feel like I'm a part of the Antony family. I'm sorry. I really can't without Deb in the first lady church suit in the confessional. Like, I, I wasn't prepared. Tammy talking about your date and I dad was like, nah, nah, that's my nigga. Like, he don't need to be dating. Like, is she ready? Like, is she really with scrap? What is she doing? I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> Jocelyn and her portrait are back at the penthouse by themselves um, post-party. Here comes Stevie. Jocelyn, she act like nothing she says or does is wrong. She just lives in Jocelyn land. Stevie talking about, yo, you need to rectify the situation. Stevie, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I'm gonna do what I wanna do, Stevie. I'm gonna do what I wanna do. That's Stevie and Jocelyn. Like, I, what else do, what, what were we expecting? Scrap and Sass and the family go to Dollar's grave and they pay their respects every year. And KK, she hasn't been since they buried him. Why be because it, it's tough. I, I get it. I get it. But she comes being that a lot of things are going on and uh, she shows her support. And that was like a touching moment because, you know, it brought everybody together and it showed her vulnerable side. And, you know, everybody got a heart. Everybody lose people. You know what I'm saying? So that was, it was touching. I was like, oh, oh it's time for the mama brunch. Um, Aunt Deb is going to be the referee for Mama Charlene and Mama D. So Mama Charlene, Rashida, and Aunt Deb, they already there. Here comes Mama D, Ernest looking like... <laughs> Turner, I died, and Scrappy was there too. And here goes our Deb and her confessional. Yo, we gotta come together. We grown women. We gotta be an example for our children and fix this shit. I'm like, you know what? I Deb, she just gives you the inspiration, and then she put that hood shit on it, and you love it. When Mama D did the seance while they were talking, hum -da 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 -da, I died. <laughs> Mama D is not well. Mama, I, I wonder if Mama D has any meds that she is currently prescribed because she's not well. Something's not right with Mama. She's not well. Um, da -da 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 -da. Whenever I feel anxious or something's going wrong, I'm just going to break out in that. Um, da -da 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 -da. Ernest, out of nowhere, just starts spilling the family business, talking about, y'all know she got a drinking problem. And she said, well, we don't talk about how you need to use lube to get it up, do we, Ernest? I said, no, no. Scrappy had to get his inhaler. I said, Lord, this baby about to have an asthma attack. I am done. Who they bring up the Bam Bam and the um, Aunt Deb brings up the date between her, her nephew and the baby. Uh, Scrappy needed his inhaler yet again. He was like, no, I wasn't aware of that. Rashida asked, talking about she knew. I was like, Rashida, shut the hell up. Sometimes you put your, you know what, you you grown ass. You knew that it was going to be on playback anyway. Scrappy was like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we been broke up, but I mean, that was real out the blue show. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really want a steak sandwich right now. Like, you did? That's how I feel. That was the episode mama d leaves it was too much they're busted out laughing at the end i could not hold myself together now y'all know next week now now i felt like this episode was a filler episode but next week gonna be good like i really hope next week is gonna be everything down below the comments let's just talk about this it, it was too much it, it was a lot in this episode thank you guys so much for watching i really do appreciate it and i will see you on the next video peace love and all that good stuff god bless bye